Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, when I was growing up, Vauxhall were a pretty special car for me. My big brother had a series of very cool Vauxhalls. I remember he had a Cavalier SRI, then he had the SRI 130 with all of 130 horsepower, and then he got the daddy of them all, the Cavalier GSI 4x4, two litre with a red top engine in it. I absolutely loved that car. It was in the days when Vauxhall were competing in the British touring cars and they were just this iconic brand. They made some really cool cars. Let's not forget the Astra, Mark 1 Astra GTE mega thing. And then I remember when the Mark 2 Astra GTE came out, it had a digital speedo and everything. I absolutely loved them. We could talk about Carlton GSIs, Senators, Lotus Carltons. There's a whole bunch of really cool cars that Vauxhall made. But in recent years, I can't say the same thing about the brand, unfortunately. I've kind of, they've fallen off my radar a little bit. And I've actually only had one Vauxhall on petrol ped since I've started, I think. In the eight years I've been doing this, I used to do a series in the early days called Hire Car, Hit or Miss. And I had a Vauxhall Insignia SRI on as a hire car hit or miss, and it was a big miss. But today is a really interesting day for me. Today is the first thing I'm doing directly with Vauxhall. And actually, I've got two videos coming to the channel, one today and one next week, thanks to the delight of embargoes. Today, in this video, I'm gonna explore the brand new Vauxhall Corsa All Electric. I am being very spoilt today. The sunshine and everything, but, so this, the Vauxhall Corsa, it's been around a long time now, and I guess as a mini owner and mini lover, I should really resonate with this car because it's the same segment, B segment car. This actually um, accounts for 30% of Vauxhall sales, but in the last two years, 44% of B segment sales in the UK. It's a really very popular car, the little Corsa. Now this is the new Corsa all electric. But what I really like about it is there's also petrol variants of this car as well. There are four petrol engine choices, all based around a 1.2 litre, starting with the entry level 75 PS unit with a manual gearbox. There's a manual and auto version with 100 PS, and the fourth most powerful option is a 130 PS auto. Now I did have the option of driving one of the petrol cars, but I chose electric for a couple of reasons. The main reason is a lot of electric cars I've driven recently have all been big SUVs, very expensive to get into. But this, this is a small, affordable, we'll get onto the pricing shortly, EV. And I can't wait to get behind the wheel and try and give it a drive and put it through its paces. 156 PS, 260 Newton meters of torque. That should push this car down the road quite nicely. What I quite like about the Vauxhall ethos about EVs is the battery pack sizes in their EVs. They're not gigantic, so that means that the weight comes down, but you've still got a good amount of range. This will do just under 250 miles of range. So I guess in the real world, you might take a little bit off of that and obviously then bear in mind climatic conditions and those types of things. But for a small B-segment city car, 200, 250 miles of range is perfect because that's the typical, you know, your commute, your run to the school, your run to the shop, short journeys, absolutely perfect. You'll be charging it at home. But then this car does support up to 100 kilowatts of DC charging. So when you do stop at a rapid charge, you'll be able to comp, you know, get that battery up to 80% really, really quickly because it's not huge. Front end styling, I like. This is the new design language from Vauxhall. This is a color specific and new to Corsa. It looks a little bit Nardo gray. The other thing is all of their EV range, there's no chrome on them anymore. There's a kind of environmental message there, but there's lots of kind of black trim. And I really like that. I like the look of this car from the front. It looks cool and quirky. 
let's have a look at the back and then most importantly we have very little time with the cars today and i want to try and get as much driving done as possible but let's just have a look at the rear end styling so it's safe to say the rear view of the new corsa is my favorite now they come in three trim levels they enter at design then gs then ultimate this is the ultimate spec and i think in this spec with the gray paintwork the black roof the D chroming, all of the black badge work, the tinted lenses. I just think it looks fantastic. I even like the aero blade wheels and I'm not normally a fan of those. But for me, Corsas were always fun, nippy little cars. When I was growing up, they were very popular with young drivers, very popular in the modification scene. And I can't wait to get behind the wheel of this kind of, if you like, entry level EV in the Vauxhall range, because it should be an interesting little package to drive. It certainly looks cool, but before we do that, let's jump inside and see what the accoutrements are like. How much space? What's the tech like? Now, I promise I'm not complaining about the sunshine today, but it is very strong, very low in the sky and being a real pain for filming. But interior wise, I like it in here. You know, these seats, they're quite comfortable. Um, driving position wise, I feel quite sort of sat low and connected in the car. I'm struggling here because I haven't driven a Corsa for a very long time, so I can't really compare it with the outgoing model. Listening to the briefing this morning, you've got a nice infotainment screen there running uh, Snapdragon by Qualcomm. So it's kind of part of the Stellantis. Um, you know, you'll see that within the Stellantis family. And also the gear controller here is from other Stellantis models as well. And I actually really like that. Um, you've got the normal drive modes there's a drive mode selected just there. You've also got a, a regen or one pedal driving mode. So all in all, it just, it does feel nice. The choice of materials is, is all right. For this, for this segment of car, it feels nice in here. In terms of back seat passenger room, it's all right. Again, we're in a B segment car, I'm not expecting a, you know, extra leg room, luxurious saloon space in there. At the end of the day, most of the time when you've got a car like this, it's your mates jumping in the back while you pop to the pub or something. So you're not probably going to be in there for a long journey, although this is a five door car. So I guess for kids or, you know, teenagers, you're probably going to have them in the back maybe. But yeah, it's nice. So I reckon we head up the road and uh, get some driving done while the weather's nice. Okay, we will start in Eco. There are three drive modes, uh, Eco, Normal and Sport. Um, we're in a lovely picturesque Cotswold village, the perfect place to drive an EV, really. Super quiet, super smooth. Now, straight away, I've got into a really nice, comfortable driving position. There's lots of adjustment on the steering wheel. I've got the steering wheel nice and close to me, just how I like it. And the seating position feels pretty good, to be honest. Visibility, uh, good visibility through the rear view mirrors, both door mounted and centrally mounted. Good visibility out of the front of the car. Now, we've got a short test drive route and again, it's, it's really challenging, I find, with these uh, EV reviews. A couple of things. One, you really need to live with an EV for a week and do 500 to maybe 1,000 miles to get under its skin. The other challenge is all EVs drive in a very similar manner. So the characteristics that we used to look for in a combustion engine car, gears and brake feel and clutch feel, those things are really not there. So super smooth, nice, easy, comfortable power delivery. But I think the challenge from the EV point of view and where I like this car and it sits, I guess, in the same camp as things like Mini Electric, is that so many electric vehicles these days are big, heavy, family SUVs that will fit five or seven people that weigh two and a half tons and cost northwards of 60 or 70,000 pounds. This, this is a little B-segment hatch. It's aimed at maybe a you know single person, a couple, somebody with a small family. Um, it's aimed at the maybe the lower income segment. So um, let's have a chat about pricing, and then we'll step up the drive modes. The 
petrol models range from the 75 PS design at £19,625 on the road to £28,300 for the 130 PS Ultimate. The electric courses start at £32,445 for the design, with the range topping out at £38,585 for the Long Range Ultimate. Okay, out onto a slightly more major road. There's a drive selector down here. I'm just gonna go from Eco. Eco was, was all right. It was, it was a deadened off throttle, as you'd expect. Straight away, there's a bit more throttle response, a bit more throttle feel in drive mode, a little bit more zip, and you feel like you're in a more sporty hatch. Styling-wise, I think that Vauxhall have gone through a bit of a renaissance over the last couple of years and started to get their styling game back on point because don't take this the wrong way Vauxhall but you did lose it for a while <laughs> you just made cars that just didn't excite me at all but recently the next video uh, or this afternoon I'm gonna be driving the new Astra and I think that looks fantastic I love the new front-end styling the new design language you're seeing in Vauxhall it just looks it looks modern and edgy and appealing and I think that's a really important thing for the brand because they did, in my eyes, lose their way a little bit. But I think with this new Corsa, from a styling point of view, they're back in the game. Now, one of the things that people buy electric vehicles for is the smooth, quiet ride. And I have to say, it is very quiet in here. You'll just in the background hear a faint whine of the electric motor. There's none of this um, manufactured noise that makes it sound like a spaceship. Just a little bit of whine in the background. And then the road and tire noise is really very good. This road, um, it's not great to be honest. There's potholes and, and imperfections down this side here. We're just driving over them. And, the suspension's nice and compliant, it's kind of soaking up the bumps and the noise, that general NVH, is pretty good. And that's exactly what you're after when you're buying an EV. One of those scary stats you see when you start reading press briefings is Vauxhall have been making the Corsa for 40 years. How the hell did that happen? And they've made 14 and a half million of them. <laughs> I just, the, those kind of numbers just absolutely stagger me. Anyway, next up, I'm gonna push the little B button here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn on the more aggressive regenerative braking, the kind of one pedal driving. So as I lift off coming up to this roundabout, I'll get some retardation. I'm not actually using the brake so the car's regen braking slowed the car down sufficiently for me there so that I didn't need to use the foot brake. And then what that also does is that regenerates as much of the kinetic energy back into the car's battery pack. Now regen braking for me is one of those things, lots of EV owners love it, some absolutely hate it. Uh, you, I tend to turn it on and off. It's got, it's got times when it's very, very useful. I actually quite like it. We've got a little bit of more twisty road here. I think we might have to, you know, when you're driving down a road like this, it just gives you the ability to balance the car a little bit as you come into a corner, just by easing off the throttle and just putting some weight on the nose of the car without having to go all the way to using the foot brake. And I quite like that, that feeling. It's, it's one of these things, I always say, when you start to drive EVs more and more, Yes, they don't have gears. Yes, they don't have that auditory pleasure of an internal combustion engine car, but they have a different set of driving skills, a different set of techniques that you can use. And if you've got one pedal driving, that's certainly one of them. So final, uh, so to normal mode, it's quite punchy. It's nice. It's the default mode the car's going to go into. I can't comment on eco mode that we were in at the start of the video in terms of what difference it makes to things like uh, energy efficiency and range and those types of things. But let's finally put it into the sport mode. 
Now straight away, the pickup on that throttle's changed quite a bit and, okay. So it's, it's by no means a sports car. It's not gonna be, you know, Taycan or EV6 GT performance, but it's got, it's got some good amount of punch. We're going down this National 60. It's got nice, a kind of confidence inspiring feel on the road. The steering is, is quite weighty. I quite like that. I like the feeling of the steering wheel in my hand. And then the poise on the road is pretty good. It's not out and out rapid, but it's for most drivers. And again, I have to reset my barometer sometimes when I come on these drives because I'm so lucky to drive big, powerful cars, whether that's piston cars or electric cars. And you do have to kind of wind that expectation back a little bit, but that's not what this car is aimed at. 150 or so PS, 250 or so miles. That is, you know, everyday requirements for people's cars. I've talked about cost already, but it was quite interesting in the briefing today, the things that Vauxhall have done to try and make their cars more attainable, more achievable. I guess it really depends on what a fan of PCP you are, and I'm not a massive fan. I did that video recently, I'll put a link above, about the, the cost of electric cars. And even though this car is just over 30,000 pounds, that's still a whole load of money. So what Vauxhall have done is they've introduced a lower trim level called Design to bring that entry cost down. They've extended their PCP finance deals from four years to five years and they've reduced the um, interest rate on their finance. And what that does is it brings the monthly cost of their finance down significantly. And I think that's important if you are thinking about buying one of these and you are of the mind, what is it gonna cost me per month? then Vauxhall doing that has certainly made it easier to step into one of these. And they're not a great deal more expensive than the petrol equivalents. I still think you need to bear in mind the total cost of ownership of the car, but in the bonkers world we live in and the price of new cars today, I think you know a new EV of this quality, starting from around about £30,000, is an interesting proposition, that's for sure and certainly more achievable than some of the other EVs I've reviewed on the channel in the last six to 12 months that are, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 pounds. But we're on a nice bit of Cotswolian road. Is it Cotswolian? I guess so. If not, I've just made that word up. Um, so we can just push on a little bit and just see what this car's manners are like when you're having some fun, because I think this car is all about fun. And, I am happy to report that it, it certainly doesn't feel disappointing in performance. In fact, it's brilliant. It's, it's a nippy little thing. So what are my final impressions of the new Vauxhall Corsa, given my very short, limited time with the car today? Styling-wise, I like it. I think it's it's not quite the bland, um, cookie-cutter approach to EVs that we're seeing from some manufacturers. It's got that new design language from Vauxhall. I like the front end, I like the rear end a lot. Um, and I like the fact that, you know, in this car, you've got the blacked out trim. It just looks like a cool, funky car. Uh, Interior-wise, it's nice and comfortable. Choice of materials is, for this segment of car, nice. The steering wheel's good, the infotainment system. I haven't had a huge amount of time to play with that, but it supports Apple CarPlay and um, and, it, and it's it's doing its job nicely. Price-wise, pretty good. Um, again, especially considering the moves in finance that Vauxhall have made to make this car more attainable. But if it can deliver the 250 miles that Vauxhall promise, it supports 100 kilowatt charging. Um, you know, power-wise and performance-wise, it ticks lots of boxes. It's a, it's an interesting and compelling package, and I I like it a lot. Um, and I think certainly 
you know, has it reignited my interest in the Vauxhall brand? Well, it's certainly gone a long way to doing that. <laughs> and, it, and it really did need to go quite some way. Um, but yeah, overall, a really interesting car, a really interesting car. But I'm gonna head back to time. And then this afternoon, I'm gonna jump in the new electric Astra Sports Tourer. A C segment, estate car, battery electric vehicle. I think that's really interesting. So make sure you tune into that one. It will be landing on the channel next week. But for now, I'm going to head back to time and go and have a spot of lunch, I think. Oh, I'm so pleased it wasn't raining today. Sunshine in the end of November. Amazing.